here's a big warning guys watch this video till the end it is super important for you and your money because we're going to talk about three things how to protect your money in inflation the three causes of inflation and five levels and the last point which is most interesting for you is what asset classes to invest in at what level of inflation and just to encourage you to watch this whole video i'll share with you what i think about bitcoin in times of inflation can it be that digital gold when things get tough on the inflation side Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Jason and let me apologize to you first. I'm terribly sorry about the overly serious tone just then, but I'm not sorry about the warning. Inflation is a serious topic. It's simply things around you getting more expensive, but your income, your bank account isn't just keeping up. That's why I'm doing this video because I don't want people to get hurt financially because you know, let's be honest, earning money can be tough. See, I was just at a dinner with some friends this week and they were all highly educated people, great careers, masters, business degrees, but no one was proactively investing. I was quite shocked. I mean, wouldn't you be? You know what? I'm going to go out to smack some reality back into them. Wait up. You know, I'm going to go now. Or remember to smack that like button when I'm gone. <laughs> so there are two parts to inflation. First is the actual inflation that we hear a lot on the TV or in the media. A lot of times they're quoting the CPI, which is a consumer price index. This is looking at inflation in the past, what has happened. Now the second part is expectation of inflation. You know, whether it's your expectation, my expectation, everyone else's. Now this is looking at inflation in the future. So in my opinion, the expectation, the future is way more important because it is the expectations of inflation that will affect our buying decision. So if I wanted to buy an iPhone because I broke my old one and I know that Apple will increase their price 10% next month, I'll go buy it now just to save some money. And the expectations has risen to a 15 year high. Ooh, this is a worrying sign. So let's talk about the three causes of inflation. But before that, just remember, inflation is incredibly complex and psychological. So it's not just like a number or percentage it's complex because there are so many factors that can affect inflation from what people like and lifestyle choices, material costs, interest rate, taxes, strength of the currency, all of it can affect inflation in its own way. And it's also psychological because inflation isn't really declared, it's actually felt. So when inflation is here, it's not made by an announcement by the government, it's when everyone starts to worry about it. It takes time for people to actually feel inflation. Even for businesses like KFC, they won't raise prices immediately just because chicken got more expensive for them because raising prices might drive away customers to go to McDonald's. So they will wait and see. So other than businesses, it's also quite similar for those who actually work in a job. Just because you go to a supermarket one day to see milk prices increase, it doesn't mean you go to your boss the next morning to ask for a raise. I mean, you could. So employees in general will also wait and see and even longer to actually act on inflation. But when everyone begins to worry about inflation, that causes problems because then it starts to spiral. So let's talk about the three causes of inflation because it will help you answer the question later. Do we have inflation today or not? So the first type is called a cost push inflation and that's when businesses experience higher input costs. So they raise and push prices higher for their customers in order just to make money. Hence, it's a cost push that that makes prices go higher. So this type of cost could be labor costs, raw material costs, supply chain costs. So you could check out this video here where I go over what the commodity super cycle is, which I think gives you great insights on what's about to come. So I put the links in the descriptions below. So feel free to check it out after this. But the important thing is we are already seeing this type of inflation. You know, factory prices are turning higher. And from here, you can also see that labor prices are also increasing. Look at the truck drivers in this video, the supply chain. They're raising the rate, they're hiring people, but they're still Still not hiring enough. This is cost push inflation. So the second type is demand pull inflation. And that is when there's more demand chasing a set number of goods. So the demand actually pulls inflation higher. Now we also have this inflation happening right now. You see how crazy housing prices are? You know, there's a set number of supply of houses. So demand is actually making housing more expensive. And I talk about more about this in this video that linked also in the descriptions below. And the last type of inflation is when people lose confidence in money, in the currency. Now that usually happens when there's a total screw up on the government level. And we're 
you're probably not going to see this happen to the US dollar, but it's happened elsewhere. Look at this sign. So money notes weren't even valued as much as toilet paper. So this happens when governments and central banks do stupid things like print a lot of money, issue a lot of debt that it can't repay. It makes people question and lose confidence in the country's money. So the US dollar, no one's quite losing that kind of confidence now, but damn right, it's printing a lot of money. It's giving a lot of people that money. And it's something that we all ought to pay attention to because if the US dollar does lose a lot of value, then every crucial commodity that businesses need to use, those kind of raw materials, whether it's crude oil, sugar, plastic, steel, iron ore, all that international trade is priced in US dollars. So if the US dollars goes down, those commodity prices go up. So out of that three things that can cause inflation, we hit three out of three. That signs are there that is inflation. So I don't buy that BS that inflation is transitory. I think it will be sustained. Now let's talk about the five levels of inflation. But you also got to understand that inflation in itself isn't really a problem if everything else also increases proportionally. See, the central bank, the Fed, usually aims for a long-term inflation rate of 2 to 3% a year. But what I'm saying is inflation could indeed be 100% and be still okay. So that means a product will double every year. In it, but it's okay in the sense that if that happens, but your salary and your income also doubles, then really the net effect is zero. So the problem with inflation isn't that it increases prices, but it is the unequal spread of that inflation that causes problems. So you really have five levels of inflation. First, you have deflation, no to low inflation, then mild, high, and then hyperinflation. The deflation is when inflation is flipped around. So prices are going down every year. And that sounds pretty good for consumers from the outset, but it's very destructive for businesses and economy. So think about it. Let's say you wanted to buy a fridge and for explanation purposes, let's say the price of the fridge reduces 20% every month. So the longer you wait, the cheaper it is for you as a consumer to buy that fridge. So the net effect is for everyone is no one really spends or goes shopping. Everyone keeps waiting and waiting and waiting because things will only be cheaper over time and cash is totally king in this deflationary context. So yes, it's quite extreme and probably not relevant for us right now. So I'm going to jump to the other extreme and talk about hyperinflation. So the deflation was when prices were dropping. Now hyperinflation is when prices increase massively. So for example, in 1941 in Hungary, inflation reached 150,000% a day. So a loaf of bread that costs 10 cents on Friday becomes $150 on Saturday and $225,000 on Sunday. You know, people just lose confidence in the currency. They don't, e they don't even need to look at the numbers anymore. It doesn't mean anything. In these type of circumstances, when there's hyperinflation, don't hold on to the currency, don't have any savings, go buy canned foods and cigarettes because those would be better value than the currency itself. I know it sounds crazy, but we've had 56 hyperinflation since the 1900, you know, according to this study. And so we've talked about deflation and hyperinflation, and now there are three levels in between these two inflation. All right, it's not that hard to explain, but it's more like a rough guideline because uh, there's not really like a set percentage number. So the first level of after deflation is no to low inflation. So 0%, so prices are not rising to just rising a little bit every year. Then there's mild inflation. So in my opinion, that's between two to 5% a year. Then there's high inflation. And in my opinion, that would be around 10% a year. So you see there, there are gaps and it isn't really clear cut between each level and that's okay. But what's important for you is the next Next part of how to know what to invest in because of inflation. So here's why inflation can really kill your investment returns. Now for my favorite inflation metaphor, it's really kind of like a treadmill. So you want to walk up two steps, you want to go to higher level of wealth, but a treadmill is really pulling you back down. It's going the other way. It's getting harder and harder to actually walk up. So if you invest with $100 and let's say you get a 10% return, with no to low inflation, you actually get to keep that $10 in profits and end up with $110. But in the same investing scenario, at a 10% inflation, even if you invest $110 and then you get a 10% return, which is you end up with $110, your $110 is actually only worth $100 because of inflation. Everything else around you, all the products and services are 10% more expensive. So it's literally like you're back at the starting line. So if there's one takeaway from this video, remember is that the level of inflation means you need to change how you invest. Now this is a simple guideline of how. In a deflationary environment, buy investment grade bond because you're going to get cash in from the interest and you're also very likely to get your principal back. And in deflationary environments, we know that cash gets more and more valuable as everything else drops in price. In scenarios of no to low inflation, buy anything that has a high growth 
like, like tech stocks. Because no inflation also means low interest rate and low interest rates means there's no cost to waiting for money to come back. Now here's a simple way to think about it. Let's say you could get 10% interest on your bank savings account. It's safe and you get interest income. Then to really attract you to invest in a growth stock, they'll need to promise you more than 10% return a year guarantee to actually compensate you for not putting that money in the bank in the form of interest income that you actually get. That's why right now when we have low inflation, interest rates are low, people really buy growth at all costs. There's simply really not much alternative. It's the right thing to do. So in scenarios with mild inflation, you invest in real estate because you can increase the rent to actually keep up with inflation. And also you invest in stocks as well. But here's where you need to do some homework. When you want to find stocks or companies that are right for these times, you need to find companies that have two capabilities. One is they can raise prices without losing customers or market share. And two is they can raise productivity or volume so increase their sales without investing too much. But I think it's very difficult to find both. But if you do know a company that has both, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably go all in. Scenarios of high inflation, you need to get out of most stock and invest in commodities or invest in companies that sell commodities. Now this is a graph that plots inflation against the stock market in the UK and that was during the 1970s. Why 1970s? Because this was a period where the oil crisis forced a high period on inflation. And you can see when inflation is high, the stock market performs very poorly because most companies, most stocks can't produce good returns in high inflation. And in case of commodities, you still have to know to choose how to pick the right one. That's a skill as well. So if you're not skilled in this, so I suggest you can choose a commodities ETF, an exchange traded fund. So that's like a basket of commodities, of different commodities. So you are more or less diversified your risk from actually choosing the wrong one. And if we're in hyperinflation, all bets are off, not stock stocks, not bonds, you invest in physical gold, silver, canned food and fine art. The monetary paper system would have collapsed so you're better off investing in things that are physical that you can carry around with you as well because then you can actually swap that with someone else immediately if they offer a service or a good that you need. Hope it was a comprehensive view on inflation and here's the final piece if you're still watching. If we are in a hyperinflation, right, should you invest in Bitcoin? And is it actually digital gold? Would it be more golden than gold in hyperinflation? Hmm. I have some Bitcoins that I bought quite a while ago. I think it was um, 2015, 2016, yeah, but not too much. So I've said that before in my other Bitcoin videos, that Bitcoin actually is evolving. And other people right now regard Bitcoin as digital gold. But is it? So the problem is Bitcoin was invented at around 2008. But since 2008, we haven't really seen hyperinflation in a global or major economy context. So Bitcoin hasn't really been tested before in the hyperinflation environment. Because since 2008, it's been always almost no to low inflation. So that's why people now invest in hyper growth things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, but we've seen how gold performs in hyperinflation. It's been tested before in history. It performs great and it is proven to perform great. So I'm really curious to see how Bitcoin will perform in a hyperinflation context. But my gut feeling right now is, and I had to choose one, I'll prefer physical gold over Bitcoin if we are in a hyperinflation context, simply because it's physical. I think I mentioned it here. But we've seen how gold performs in hyperinflation. It's been tested before in history. It performs great and it is proven to perform great. But if I had to choose, I'll choose gold. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was valuable for your time. So if you did learn something, do smack that like button because that really mean a lot to me. If you'd like to reach out, you can reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at updive8. Also remember to subscribe to my channel if you're new here and hit the bell so you don't miss out on the next video. I make finance and investment content easy to understand. Like always, happy investing. See you in the next video.